Welcome to the Average Outdoors channel. For those of you that have watched a couple videos in the past, you can know this is my knife grinding station. Trust the old 1x30 here. Keep it out of the shop because if you do all your grinding in the shop, it will be a just a nightmare with all the dust. It produces so much dust, especially when you start doing wood. It's just nice to have it outside if you can swing it. And this is like a partially enclosed, you have a roof, it keeps the water off of this. Now if you get a lot of wind when it's raining, this does get wet, but nothing that's going to break it so far. I've had this outdoors for years, six years to be exact. It has been outside and doing just fine. Now, if you also been watching, you know that in this location right here is where I kept my coal forge. That coal forge is no longer in use. I still have it for future projects if need be. But it is now in a new locale, and that is neglected off to the side over here. But that is for good reason. In this video, I'm going to kind of talk about my experiences with coal versus propane. I'm also going to talk about my new propane forge, kind of how I went about building it, especially uh, as it pertains to lacking a welder. And we're going to kind of talk about the pros and cons of each. So here's my new forging setup. Uh, the shop is a mess, as always. You can't see my... This is where I put my scrap wood that I would then use as kindling for my wood stove. And if you watched my last video forging that bottle opener, you saw that I used this propane burner, propane forge. I've had this propane forge for quite some time, and I've kind of been wanting to put it through its paces before making a video on it to make sure that the design was sound and that it is, is long-lasting and durable. Now the forge body, the forge construction, is very simple and straightforward. This is a compressed air tank from Harbor Freight. I found one online for about 20 bucks. And then from Amazon, I found fiber wool, kale wool, ceramic wool, whatever you want to call it. And inside is just a Rutland pizza brick. And it is withholding very well so far. Now I've heard that if you start using borax as a fluxing agent, then that borax is kind of caustic and it will eat away at your at your stone in there. I haven't done that yet, so we'll find out. I'll kind of repost my results with that once I get there. Now, without a welder, I had to figure out a way to do all of the construction pieces on it, namely this hinge right here and the mounting for your propane burner. Now, you may be looking at this and saying your weld lines absolutely suck, and well, you'd be right. This is all JB Weld, so it's not gonna be pretty. I used a lot of it to make sure that it stayed where I wanted it to stay. This is a really simple door hinge, uh, Stanley brand in fact. And if this would focus for me, it's kind of going out of focus here, interestingly. Anyways, I used stainless steel screws, so I didn't want anything zinc coated to be able to put off any caustic, <laughs> any toxic chemicals or off gas, anything weird. So this is all stainless steel bolts, kind of spendy. I probably spent 20 bucks in the hardware for that. Um, and then I just bolted it in and sealed it up with some JB Weld and so far it's been really well. Now you can kind of see that this is off kilter here. What happened was there was a plastic insert, kind of a plastic bushing inside of this and I knew it was going to melt on me. It did melt and so you can now see it kind of limp, hangs down a little bit more than it used to. Not a big deal, the cable is still sealed here so I'm not having any heat exchange from that gap at all. And you can see I've run quite a few heat cycles through this and got up to very high temperatures. And there is some receding from, you can kind of see the paint underneath from the JB Weld. It's holding up well. It's holding up just fine. I haven't put anything on the bottom. It's just resting here on the, uh, the top of the wood stove. And that's doing fine. When I posted this burner in the forge on a Facebook group that I'm on called uh, Knife Making a Hobby. Really awesome group. A lot of great talent on there. Anyways, when I showed this, they see that this is bare kaol here. And kaol is toxic if you breathe it in, and it will kind of shoot off really small microscopic particles. And if you breathe that in, it's really bad for your lungs. So you have to find a way to seal it. And the sealants used are like ITC, and there's a couple of ones. They're really expensive. We're talking like a two ounce, three ounce bottle is like $100. And so I did not want to go that route. I may go that route in the future, but what I did instead was I used a chemical to rigidize this. So I put four coats of rigidizer, and that's actually what you see up here 
is this white stuff. So this is not bare. You can see it's hard. Uh, it's not soft. It's not going to put off a bunch of a bunch of little particles in the air. Four coats of rigidizer in here on the whole thing. So it should be better than bare, but it's probably not as good as if it were sealed with a, a true forged sealant. I used West Systems 406 colloidal silica as my as my sealant here, as my rigidizer, I just mix this with water until it was at a consistency I could spray, and I put it into a spray bottle and just sprayed away. This was really cheap, like 10 bucks at a marine supply store. So that's what I've used. So far it is working really well. Um, if you see me wearing a respirator, that is because I'm still halfway afraid of particles getting in the air, and I figure it's easy enough to wear, so why not wear it anyways? So the construction of the actual forge body was really simple, really straightforward. Didn't cost too much money. You know, you're talking $20 for all the hardware, probably 40 bucks for the KOL, $10 for the West Systems 406, and then, you know, I bought the used tank for 25 bucks. So you can add that up. It's not very expensive. What was a little bit more expensive, and this was due to my inexperience and my lack of knowledge, was the forge burner setup. Annoyingly, I spent way more money on this than I really should have, and that was because there's not a local store. I went into plumbing stores, and they just didn't have all the little bits and fasteners that I need. So I would, it's just trial by error to figure out what this was. You know, I'm not a plumber by trade. I haven't worked a lot in these pipes. This is the first time I've ever bought, in, you know, pipe nipples and flanges and all that stuff. I just haven't had any experience with that. And so getting all these connections and figuring out what works took, um, a little bit more money than I would have liked to spend, but in the end I got there and I would do it again over. What we have here is a 20 PSI regulator and it is fully adjustable. Now I, don't, I can't tell what PSI I'm running at. There's no valve here or gauge. Um, not a big deal, it, it works. And that is leading to an elbow here for your pipe nipple and if you can see in there, um, there's just a plug and then inside the plug I screwed in a MIG tip. I think a six millimeter MIG tip and that is angled ever so precisely the right spot now this was the most annoying part of the entire build was tuning this burner to actually to burn um, what was happening was I'd tune it and you'd get it all tightened and then if you touched this at all in the slightest little movement would make the burner not not go And then once you did get this burner to be exactly where you want it, I'd stick it in here, turn it on, and then of course something changed. The way the gases flew in here and, and pulled out, the venturi effect was lost and it wouldn't work. So annoying. So then I had to stick it in here and retune it. It just was a pain and I don't love this burner design. Now it works, but I'm just so afraid of touching, you know, if I nick this or if I accidentally kick that or I'm, I'm scared to change out my propane tanks and I haven't had to fill it up, but I feel like once I do, I'm going to, I'm going to mess with the, the placement of it and it's not going to work. I'm going to have to spend another 20 minutes retuning it. Absolute pain. Really not fun, but it does work. In the future, I have plans of adding another burner over here. You can see I definitely favored the right side with this burner placement. That gave me plenty of room to add another here. I'm going to go to a dual burner setup in the future, as well as I'd like to build an opening back here so I can stick in longer pieces. That's one of the cons I have right now is that if I've got a really long piece, I'm not going to be able to get it in here. Now for the big question. Why did you go to a propane forge when you had a perfectly good coal forge? And as a beginner, what would you recommend, coal or pain? Now for the first question, I went to this, namely because I was having trouble. I actually forged out this kukri on the coal forge. And then when I went to try and heat treat it, I couldn't do it. The blade length was actually too big to where I couldn't get the entire blade heated up to critical temperature in my little coal forge. Now, could I have built a new coal forge and made it bigger? Definitely, I could have, um, but that would have required time and effort and not still getting to exactly what I want. And that is also something that is fire safe. We're out here in the desert, and last year I damn near started a fire with my coal forge. Um, there was a little bit of grass dry grass next to the forge, a piece of coal flew out, caught on fire, I tried stamping it out with my foot, 
And then as that was happening, the fire was literally spreading to re surrounding area. Um, luckily, I had a shovel on hand and I was able to put it out. But that was a real big eye opener, and I said I need to get this forge inside someplace that is not a fire hazard and something I can do year round, regardless of the weather. If it's raining in here, I can do that. I don't have to worry about starting a fire. I can keep it dry. It's better overall for that purpose. The second big reason why I wanted propane over coal was that coal was getting very expensive to run. Now what was happening is if you're just doing heat treating on your blade, the coal was fine. You'd fire it up, you'd probably use two handfuls of coal, you get your knife up to critical temperature, you quench it, you're good to go. Now once I started doing forging projects where I actually had to do 10 or 20 different heats, I was burning through pounds and pounds of coal and I'm having to buy my coal off of eBay for a dollar a pound and it just got really expensive and kind of cost prohibitive to do actual forging things where I'm doing a lot of hammering. Now if I'm just trying to straighten out a piece of steel or like I said heat up a knife, no big deal. Um, but it was getting expensive and this forge, it's quick to heat up. You know, you don't have to spend an hour, not an hour, you know, you don't have to spend 10, 15 minutes getting your forge up to temperature. This one gets up to temperature really quick. I just have to turn on a valve, light it, it's on. And then I can run this thing for, I mean, I don't, I've probably run this forge on a three quarters of a full tank and I've probably run it for two or three hours and I still have a lot of propane left in it. And propane is cheap. I got a place locally that sells it for a buck fifty a gallon. So I can run this thing all day and never even have to think about the cost of gas to run this burner. Now, which one would you recommend as a new knife maker? Would you go propane or would you go coal? Now, if I were to buy a propane forge and let's say you spend, let's get real. If you want to buy one that has similar capabilities as this one, you're going to have to spend about $300 to $400 on something that's quality, something you can trust. Now I know they have that, you know, little tiny knife maker one, but it is so small, so small. And I don't, it looks like they're just using bare cable, doesn't look sealed at all. So then factor in another, I don't know, depending on how much you want to do, if you want to use like ITC product, factor another hundred dollars, or you just want to do what I did and use the colloidal silica, factor another 10, 15 bucks. But you're gonna have to spend some money to get there. Now versus the coal forge, I spent 40 bucks on my coal forge way back when I was in college and it served me very well for a very long time. So I think for the ease of manufacturing, the coal forge is super easy versus this took some trial and error and definitely took some more money. I think I'm totally into this project for, I don't know, like 300 bucks? Now, if I were to do this again, I could get that price down a lot cheaper because, like I said, the problem was I was buying a bunch of different stuff up here. I bought a needle valve and I bought a bunch of other hoses and, and you're buying off Amazon. Now, I, I could have returned it, but I just didn't. I kept it, figured I'd use it for a future project. So I've got a bunch of just odd fasteners and wrong hoses and a needle valve that didn't work for this application. And it was a, a process trying to learn how to do it. So for ease of manufacturing and ease of cost, for a new knife maker, I'd go forge or coal forge all day long over propane. Now, once I have the propane one, it is so much better. <laughs> it doesn't get as hot. I'll give you that. Like I can't melt metal in this burner. Well, you know, with this burner and this forge, the coal one would melt metal. So we'll see if I'm if I'm able to do um, forge welding. I'm, I'm curious. I'm going to try that here real soon. Try and do a forge welding in this project. I'm not sure if it'll get that hot. I might have to put it in another burner to get there. Um, but it is so much better and allows me to heat larger blades, which is really the main thing. That, the fire, and the cost of running were really what drove me to using this burner. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Uh, the no forge, I'm sorry, no weld forge plan is, is pretty cool. It's working off really well. So if you want to copy it, go for it. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Bye.